Hey everyone, so today I wanted to talk kind of all about timelines and um, do more of an overview of the timeline in Articulate Storyline. So let's get into that. Now to access the timeline, you need to go into slide view. So you can double click into your slide. And this right here is the timeline. Now, if you're working on um, multiple projects or uh, multiple monitors and you've got a very large timeline, I only have a few items on here, but if you have a lot, you might find it easier to undock the panel, drag this over to one of your other monitors and enlarge it so that you can kind of see everything. Um, I don't need that, so I'm just going to redock my timeline. But it can be helpful um, if you're working on projects that have a lot going on on the timeline. Now, things that I find super helpful um, is being able, I guess, here we go. Um, the timeline is a timeline of each slide. Um, and the duration of that slide. So in this instance, um, it may have only been a couple of seconds, but then we added some audio and now the timeline goes up to about 10 seconds. Um, you can zoom in or out of this time. So um, I usually just use my, sorry, I usually, <laughs> I'm on my, my uh, touchpad. So I usually just hover over the time and use my mouse wheel to increase um, the gaps to be more granular in my placement of objects on the timeline or um, scroll down and you can um, get it much smaller, which is helpful if you have a lot of media and a very long timeline. So some of the elements that I like to use on the timeline are your show and uh, hide icons here. So you can show or hide all, or you can just turn off certain, certain elements. So here, let me drag this down. So you could just choose to hide those if you're looking to deal with just one object. This is really helpful when it comes to um, text that build. So if you have multiple different text boxes that um, build on to one another and then you need to make an edit of something but it might be buried under a bunch of different text boxes or say it's a text box that's buried under some images, um, it's nice to just turn everything off and kind of go one at a time to try and find the object that you're looking for. Um, but when you do that, make sure that at the end when you're done <laughs> you make everything visible again. Another thing that I like about the timeline in Storyline is the ability to be able to lock. So if you say you're working with multiple developers and you've got elements that you want untouched uh, or want to prevent touching, you could choose to just lock those items. And then that way, see, I'm trying to click on these two. Um, that way, if somebody's trying to interact or adjust an element, it's one more kind of fail safe to help prevent them from doing that because they'll have to go and unlock those items. You can lock all of the items. Um, you can lock none of them. Most of the time, I don't have any locked. Um, I will say, though, that when you're working with imagery, if you had a background image that, say, you didn't want it to be a... Uh, you didn't want to have a, a format background um, and have that image as the background. One thing that you could do is lock your background image, which is this blue sky photo. And so that way, when you're trying to like move these items around and like reposition them, you're not accidentally dragging your background because that can get kind of irritating. Um, a best practice when using the timeline is to rename the objects on your timeline so that they're very easy to identify. This is particularly helpful when you start building out triggers. So for example, um, this picture five is not very meaningful. So you could 
double click into it and just rename it. So this is rename background. This one is black, white cat, gray cat, white cat, box cat. And then text to speech is going to be our audio. So this makes it really helpful because if, say for example, I want to create a trigger um, that's just associated with the white cat, I can create my trigger and say, jump to the next slide when the user clicks. And then you'll see the objects are very easily named. So if I wanted it to jump to the next slide when the user clicks the white cat, I can just grab that instead of trying to be like, oh, what was picture number six? Is that the white cat? I don't know. Um, another thing that you can do is you can group objects. So um, say I wanted to add a text box, cat in a box, and let's just increase the size so you can read that. Say I had labels for each of these um, these cats here, and I'm going to eventually create triggers. I don't know, say I want to do a click and reveal that when we click on this cat in a box, um, it shows a layer or a light box slide that talks about cats in boxes. Um, you can take those two elements because they're one and the same and you can group them together. So you just select both elements or all the elements you want grouped and then you hit control G um, and now this is one object instead of being two objects. So you can trigger um, um, <laughs> you, you would probably wait to label them until you've grouped your objects. Um, then if you create a trigger, you're just going to be triggering the whole group versus um, like if the user clicks on cat in a box and nothing happens because you didn't have a trigger for the text. Um, this just kind of makes that a little bit simpler. And a group just means that you're, like I said, grouping things together. So you'll see a little carrot. And if you click on the carrot, you'll see the items that comprise that group. Now, if you don't want the uh, group, you can also ungroup. So you can access your grouping and ungrouping via the hotkeys, or you can right click and choose group, group, or ungroup. So now we have them separate again. I'm just going to group mine back together. Then, um, something that, like a, an element that is very important with the timeline is using it as a means to say sync animations to audio narration. This is important when you're doing text that builds uh, by paragraph instead of by one object, or if you want the icons to uh, appear when they're being discussed. So. Um, we're going to talk about that in a moment uh, because you'll also see that there are some controls here. Um, at the bottom of the timeline, you'll see a play control, a stop control. This will the play will also turn to pause. You can also increase or decrease the size of your timeline this way using this little slider versus um, hovering over the um, the numbers and then. Um, rolling your mouse in or out. And so when I want to sync an object to the audio, what I would do is I would play, I would hit play or spacebar, spacebar will act as a play pause. And I will let the playhead, which is this blue um, icon with a line, I'll let it play through the audio. And anytime I hear things that I want to time, I'm going to hit the C, uh, the C button on your keyboard, which creates what's called a cue point. So let's just do that activity for this audio really quick. On this slide, we have one white cat, one black and white cat with a black nose, one gray cat who has two different colored eyes, and one black cat in a box. All right, so we've got all of our objects 
the first one I think is a little late, so I'm just going to take that cue point and drag it. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to select the select all of my images, so the group plus the three um, individual images, and I'm going to select group one, which is the top one, hold down my shift key, and then I'm going to click the last one that I want. I'm going to go up to anim oh, up to animations, sorry, and instead of none, I want them to fade. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take them in the order that they were discussed, uh, which is we've got white cat and where I'm going to right click it and where it says align to cue point, I'm going to align to cue point one. Then we had our black and white cat. We're going to align that to cue point two, gray cat, cue point three and the group, which is the cat in the box, to Q.4. So now when we play this, you're going to see each of the uh, images come up and appear when, uh, when they are spoken about in the audio. On this slide, we have one white cat, one black and white cat with a black nose, one gray cat who has two different colored eyes, and one black cat in a box. Now, in relation to cue points, you can uh, delete one cue point, you can delete all cue points, or you could even add an additional cue point at the playhead. So you can drag this playhead wherever you want. Say I want it there, and you can press the C, and you will have another cue point. If you wanted to delete them all, you just select delete all, and then you kind of start from scratch. You, you don't have any cue points up there at all. Now this really helps with all of your timing for kind of synchronization. You can do this with video as well and say have um, different objects pop up at different points in your videos. It's really handy. Another handy thing is um, the show always and show until um, end. Show until end will display the object until the end of the slides timeline, whereas show always will display the object for the entire duration of your, your slide. So it will show always. Um, another thing that you can do uh, from the timeline is right click. So this is a photo. You can right click, you can format your picture. Um, you have all of these options available to you. So you can replace the picture, you can export the picture, you can show it in your media library, um, you can format your picture, etc. But audio and video are handy because when you click on an audio or video in the timeline, right click, you can do a few different things. So you can replace or export the audio, but you can also preview the audio, create text to speech or edit the audio. So I like being able to access my audio editor very handy from the uh, timeline. Or um, if I had a video, so let's say, um, let's just create a new slide and we're gonna insert a video Cat. Let's see. Okay, cool. Let's take this one. So say we have this video and we want to um, replace it with something else. You can right click and replace the video. So we can replace this video with a video from file, media library, content library. Um, and we could just choose another video and very quickly replace videos uh, without having to delete the video, go find another video, add it in. The only thing that you might want to be mindful of is to make sure that when you replace that the timeline is the appropriate length of the video. So this one says 11, just over 11 seconds. You can quickly find out how long the video is by going into edit video. And you'll see that it's 11 minutes uh, and 13. 13 seconds or 11 seconds 0.13. I find it really handy to be able to export my video or audio, 
and if there's closed captions, being able to export my closed captions. So these are all kind of things that you can do from your timeline. You can also go in uh, to accessibility from the timeline and put in whether it's a visible by the accessibility tools, you can add your closed captions here, you can add some alternative text, white cats sleeping, and do that from the timeline. So those are just a handful of things that you can do with the timeline in Articulate Storyline. And I hope that kind of removes some of the mystery that might come along with the timeline in the, in the tool.